The Tracker Claw, the only one without an animated intro. It used to be Fear Claw, so I'm just gonna use that. But just pretend there's a rumble horn and a tracker title. Natural Born Hunters. Isn't that every apex predator? Which includes most dragons? Tracker class dragons have a highly acute sense of smell and taste that enables them to effortlessly track down and find anything. Is that it? Just, they are hunters and they can smell someone else's dog poo a little bit further than the average. It's not much to go on, but I guess we'll have to do. So yes, the tracker class is next in the series. Lord help me when I do the mystery class. <laughs> and I'll be looking at why these specific sets of dragons fit into this category and why some are not tracker class dragons. This is going to be a series covering all the dragon classes. I've done a strike class video. Inspired by Loxian's not type series, I'm referring to the fan wiki, so any major mistakes will be corrected and pinned in the comments by me. I'm only talking about the original dragons, not rescue riders, as they're not part of the same universe, and Nine Realms as the show is new and will have more to come. Each sold separately. Content may vary by video. No code cards per video. The first category is, yes, these are definitely tracking dragons. With high senses, predominantly a superb sense of smell. Detecting scents from miles away, so good. <laughs> Starting with a good baseline, the rumble horn. From the discovery of this dragon, it defined a whole new class. Rumblehorns can fire explosive missiles from long distances. They are very strong with thick armor plating protecting them from most threats. Using their horns and surprising speed, they can charge any enemies like a rhinoceros. So basically, this thing is built like a bloody tank. Colliding with one of those would really spoil your weekend. It would do more than spoil your weekend. <sighs> it would flatten you like a pancake. Mmm, pancake. In the morning! Pancakes. However, these aren't the reasons why this dragon is a tracker, but it sets a trend that these dragons tend to be more strong and resilient. The reasons, of course, is its amazing sense of smell. In House of Train Dragon 2, Hiccup drops his helmet in the water. Silly Hiccup. Luckily, Daddy was able to find it, otherwise he would have been put into the lost and found amongst B.O. drenched gym tops, broken cricket bats, and someone's pair of underpants. My point is that being in the frozen water for such a long time would make it lose its scent, despite sitting on Hiccup's greasy head. Ew. They haven't got shampoo in Viking times. Point still stands. I think Hiccup needs to get some head and shoulders. <laughs> Skullcrusher is still able to pick up the smell and track it all the way to the home of the Great Bewilderbeast. They can use this to find prey and smell when someone is coming, making them very hard to sneak up on. In Race to the Edge, the episode Crushing It shows Skullcrusher detecting a disaster. Yeah, Gobble's mind in the episode is a disaster. Oh look, it's Peppy, my favourite pet yak! Great job detecting it, detective! Here's a gold star. There was an oncoming tsunami that was about to hit the edge. Now I don't believe this dragon has a magical sense for natural disasters like an Absol, but it's got an angst of one. Now I think the rumble horn smelt a change in the ocean and using its vast intelligence identified it was a tsunami. And I don't think this idea is too far fetched. Many animals like cats, dogs, elephants can detect tsunamis using the variety of their senses like hearing or feeling the vibrations either from the quake or, you know, a city wiping ton of water approaching. And I believe that's what Skull Crusher did. So with superior sense to most dragons and the ability to feel pending disasters, Rumblehorns are the most fitting of the Tracker class. Next is the Thunderclaw. Despite its really cool name, it's fairly dopey. <laughs> Their abilities consist of tracking and stampeding. Quo! What a diverse moveset. One of them isn't really an ability, it's just a behaviour it does. Thunderclaws shoot their either green or orange streams. <laughs> they just piss up a tree. And Fireball. What a mess of a firepower. And they are quite strong, and others pulling some of Drago's war machines. Although they are in two movies and in two comics, they don't have many details about them. They are pretty plain, docile, herding dragons, with no outlandish abilities, or any abilities for that matter, so it would be hard to categorise them into any other class. M maybe Boulder? But having that sense of smell firmly places it in the tracker. Yep, they have an acute sense of smell, allowing them to locate items easily. They do this like lizards and snakes, sticking their forked tongues out in the air, tasting the chemical, leading them to the direction of the source. Lizards and snakes have a special organ called Jacobson's organ, located in the roof of their mouths. They stick their tongues out, collecting the chemicals from the air, then the Jacobson's organ sends a signal to their brains, telling them pooey stinky that smells, or yum yum cookie. And I imagine that this dragon has the same or very similar organ to this. Jacob, why does this dragon have your son's organs? Jacob? The Sniffle Hunch has even less going for it, with its only ability to smell out friends and foes. Ooh, how useful. I swear this dragon was just made to fill a quota. Well, it is an amalgamation of many other dragon species. Anyway, let's look at its firepower. 
<laughs> Fire sneezing. <laughs> I imagine if it gets a cold, it will melt down its own house. <laughs> <laughs> this dragon got the short end of the stick. Anyway, does this dragon have anything else other than needing a tissue? Bless you. Excuse me. No, God has blessed you. Look how cute he is. Oh. The trend of being resilient doesn't really apply to this dragon. It can carry heavy stuff and fly long distances without showing signs of exhaustion. Hmm, like most other dragons. You're pretty friendly, very dog-like, but to be brutally honest, it's got nothing other than its sense of smell. They have a keen one, and they have an unusual ability to tell if the dragon is friend or foe by sniffing. <laughs> Hence why one rammed their nose right up Toothless's ass. But I'm intrigued. How can they tell this? I imagine they could smell the different levels of hormones in the body that dictate the dragon's emotions. Perhaps they could smell the serotonin and dopamine and know that the dragon is friendly. But if they can smell adrenaline or cortisol, they know the dragon is hostile. Many animals can detect changes in hormone levels in humans, like menstruation or hormone imbalances. They could detect bad weather coming, since the changes in the ozone, which means stormy weather, because the thunderstorm's downdraft carries O3 from higher to lower altitudes. There is also a petch call, which is the term to describe the unique earthly smell of rain. So the dragon could smell that miles away, tell if it's heading towards it, so it could move to shelter before the rain hits. Lastly, they can smell if the dragon is tame or wild. Judging by the heavy possibility that this dragon could smell hormones in the body, it could most likely smell the owner on the tame dragon especially if they're owning a saddle that their owner sits their stinky bum on. So to be fair, after doing research in an advanced sense of smell, a powerful sniffer is really OP. The sense of smell is very powerful. Dogs can literally save people's lives by smelling changes in the body. So, <laughs> I have to admit, I take back what I said about this dragon. <laughs> its strong sense of smell is really awesome. I thought this would have been the dragon I would spend the least amount of time on, but thus far it's the one I spent the most. <laughs> Lastly in this category is the Wing Dasher. Like the Sniffle Hunch, it only has the tracking ability, so like before it only suits the tracker class. But let's dive in deeper. This is another dragon that could carry heavy things without signs of struggle, and is another fairly resilient one. Some Wing Dashers have extremely thick hides, enabling them to take on a lot of physical punishment. Their firepower is shooting small round balls of fire. Another dragon which is friendly. Funny, if a dragon can smell the mood of the stranger, they tend to be friendlier. Huh. But like before, where they shine is the organ at the end of their face. It is said that they could detect scents anywhere in the barbaric archipelago and beyond. A wing gnasher's sense of smell is so well defined that they can smell a single daisy from a hundred miles away. Wow! Oh, if the winds are favourable. But still! To put that in perspective, bears can smell 2,100 times better than humans and can follow their nose up to 20 miles away. 40 miles for polar bears but there's nothing much blocking smells because it has a pretty desolate habitat. And that's rotting carcasses, which reek a lot. <laughs> Not particularly scentless daisies. Let's give it the benefit of doubt. I imagine wing gnashers can reach their feet when they are soaring in the air with little blocking the smells. So let's use the polar bear statistic. That means wing gnashers have 5,250 times better smelling than humans and 2.5 times better than bears which is one of the best smelling animal on the planet. This dragon is a god of smelling. But as per Newton's third law, for every action, there is an equal opposite reaction. Even though that's about forces and not evolution. Wingnashers have absolutely shite hearing. It's so bad people believe they don't even have ears. Additionally, this dragon also likes the taste of chemicals in the air. <laughs> Just like the Sniffle Hunch. Apparently from the flavour they could tell information about other nearby dragons and even food that they are eating. Ugh. The next category is half sniff sniff boys and half wait a minute, you're another class. This is the territory where I wasn't 100% sure whether or not to put them in the not tracker section as they have the boringness abilities of one said tracker and has some extra little bits that fit into another class. So this is like a half not category. You'll see what I mean in a minute. The Deadly Nadder is a good example. The Nadders were initially a part of the Shark class, but it changed in House of Train Dragon 2. Their firepower is neutral in terms of the class disparity. It's not like other Tracker class, but it isn't really like Shark class either. The only one which is similar is the Razor Whips, with the hottest fire of all dragon species. Oh gosh! It's not that, why are you riding Stormfly? The fire is known as Magnesium Blast. It's so hot, combined with Gronkle's Lava Blast, Nadders could break through dragon-proof chains. Right, so what makes this dragon sharp then? The spine shot? 
Nados can fire venomous spikes used to immobilize prey with extreme accuracy. Huh, that's almost identical to the description of the shark class. Most of these dragons can fire extremely sharp and poisonous projectiles from their bodies, which can quickly be regenerated. Come to think of it, the Anado was originally the poster child for the shark class, and literally matches every description, vain and prideful. Yup. Watch out, babe, I'll take care of this. Sharp body parts, owie. A door stroking and made to fuss off. Gucci Gucci Goo! But there are considerable similarities to tracker dragons. Its strength is higher than you would expect from this type of dragon, being able to lift a 5,000 pound monstrous nightmare. Their stamina is high, being able to fly long distances. It also has a nasal horn like many others in this class. Yes, even the rounded ones. And of course, the deadly nanas have a superb sense of smell, which is the reason why it changed class in the first place. Baby nanas can smell a human from 100 feet away, which is around 30 meters, but apparently it's unknown if it increases as they mature. Um, yes? We've seen Stormfly track Toothless to the hidden world and smell a triple strike before anyone else has seen it. So yeah, the deadly nadder, half sharp, half tracker. So why is it a tracker? Do the shark class elements take priority or do the tracker class elements? This is probably just showing the flaws of the class system based on abilities. <laughs> but I would say it's more sharp than tracker as I'm sure there are other dragons in other classes with great smell. But it's very split down the middle. Just like the name of this next dragon, the common rock stomper or the better name, the Mold Ruffle, has a similar body type to Nadders, focusing on speed and agility, proficiently hunting. Their firepower consists of shooting huge, powerful fireballs, with a signature ability gathering fire on the edges of their wings and tail, strengthening the blaze by fanning the fire travelling at great speeds. They have a nasty habit on setting themselves on fire. Wait a minute, that's Stoker class! To be fair, in School of Dragons they are classed as Stoker, but in the Rise of Bug they are classed as Tracker. Wait, what? The Mold Ruffle first appeared in School of Dragon. At a later date, this dragon was added to Dragon's Rise of Berg as an individual named Mold Ruffle, and the dragon species being named the Common Rock Stomper. So, which one is more canon? This isn't really the correct question to ask. What abilities does the dragon have that suit more with the specific class? So, we've looked at the Stoker side. Why is this dragon a tracker then? Well, it's said to have superb tracking skills, including tracking enemies. Full stop. It's reclassed into tracking and it only has vague track. Oh, it has sharp, long-ranged vision to help spot prey. Although they have very small eyes? I would argue that the Night Fury would have better sight, as they are big and so adorable. They are wonderfully curious. Be careful, in some circles that is a weakness and could kill you. With intelligent, cat-like nature, with keen hunting sense. Yeah, the equivalent eyesight of a cat. They are precise, cutting through strong winds to get to their target. Well, I guess a tracker class are naturally born hunters. Despite other stokers tend to be top predators, having strong senses like monstrous nightmares, with strong smell, and singe tails having unique eyesight, like a chameleon. This is another case of which side takes precedent, the stoker or the tracker? I believe the mold ruffle is more of a stoker due to setting themselves on fire, and the only tracking ability it has is good eyesight, which none of the other tracker class dragons have. I put it in this category because it does have some resemblance of tracking compared to the next category. These dragons are definitely not tracker class, with very little to no significant tracking abilities, but are more suited to other classes. This is my opinion, as at the end of the day, these dragons are staying in these classes, nothing I say or do would ever change that, so if you disagree, let me know in the comments why. Starting with the monster of the deep, the Submaripper. Up my ripper, fat one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ten years old. No, 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 no. I'm five. Which is classed as tidal and tracker. I, I have no idea why it has two classes. I believe dragons should only be in one. And what makes this worse is there is no sense of tracking. In the section about hunting, it says it is proven to be an effective hunter, as he was able to devour ships, people, and dragons quickly. So. Other than being a gigantic Kirby, which is apparently enough to be a tracker nowadays, there is nothing else. Let's describe why this dragon fits better as a tidal class. Firstly, the very obvious answer. It lives in the deep ocean. It's able to create large whirlpool vortexes powerful enough to sink large ships and dragons above the water, with the firepower complementing the suck by projectile vomiting the shipwrecks it has ingested. <laughs> Like an orca hunting for seals, Submarippers can create tidal waves by slamming its massive body on the water surface, which is a complement to its intelligence. 
The beast recognised Hiccup freed it, so it returned a favour by bringing him and Toothless back to the surface. The creature is very adapted to the water, being able to hold its breath for long periods, swim at high rates of speed, and adaptively use the ocean to sneak up on a shell fire without anyone noticing it. With a prominent descriptor of the title class being dragons that live in the ocean, and with no tracking abilities other than being the ultimate camp in a COD map, bloody nerds, it's safe to say this dragon is not tracker class. The last one today is funny enough another dragon that should also be in the title class. A two for two, the Mudraker has special sense receptors that react to vibrations. But where does it use these sense receptors? Deep underwater. Mudrakers use sound waves for echolocation, locating and tracking down objects underwater. I have to admit, echolocation is more of a reason to be a tracking dragon, but Toothless also has echolocation, and he's not part tracker. So something a little bit more would be preferable. It's not really strong enough on its own. Now the reason why I say it's not strong enough is because the species has many more similarities to other tidal dragons than trackers. Sonic Blast. Like Thunder Drum, the Mudraker produces sonic blasts that travel at intense speeds through the water, causing powerful waves. They are thick hides which provides protection. What a great amount of detail. <laughs> Sense receptors that feel vibrations similar to the pressure sensors on the tip of crocodile's snails. They are called integumentary sensory organs in their skin, which assist in sensing flows locating the origin of the disturbances in water, which is a specialised organ for an animal that spends most of its time in water. Just like the mudraker, that's home is the murky swamps. With all things considered, I don't think the echolocation is strong enough to classify it as a tracker, although being very cool. It just has way too many other similarities, like its firepower, the location for its tracking ability, and the home environment, being a tidal class. So there we go, that's all the reasons why these dragons are all tracker class dragons, and why some are not. Let me know what you think, did you agree, did you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next not class video, and I'll see you all later. TTFN, ta for now.